I have two versions of black armor bouncing around in my head. Uh, there's a lot of space to bounce in there. But if someone mentions black armor, I either think of... Um, now stand aside, worthy adversary. Or I think of... When painting miniatures, we're often painting light and shadow. Even with a layer paint, a wash and a dry brush, it's about getting a sense of depth. Black, though, is either black or not black. The point, really, of black is that it does not have depth. If we look at my two uh, mental images of black, well, one is completely flat. The cloth, that is. The helmet is uh, more of a dark stained metal and is you know it's not actually black the other fellow well he's shiny so there are light reflections on the glossy surface but the black is always black so what does that mean to our minis well that painting black is tricky it's a lot about painting light reflections that are surface dependent shiny armor will have sharp highlights black cloth will have soft hardly visible highlights to get a great black, you'd have to approach it with the same perspective needed for something like non-metallic metal. But what about just getting a decent black? Well, I want to show a quite specific, let's call it recipe, uh, on how to paint a tabletop standard black armor, going for a mix of Darth Vader and the Black Knight's helmet. At the same time, talking conceptually, a fancy word, about painting black. I start out with a zenithal prime going heavy on the white. So after covering the miniature with the black primer, I then spray uh, with the white from up top and at a 45 degree angle, repeatedly, leaving me with a miniature that pretty much varies from grey to light grey to white. I'm after a relatively smooth surface with not all that much black left. I want to mention that using a rattle can for this is perfectly fine. Just to show you, the ghost with the pointy stick on the left uh, is rattle can with black and then grey sear from Games Workshop. It's not a big difference from the knight on the right uh, that's airbrushed. Why the zenithal prime? Well, I find that when painting black, uh, there can be quite a benefit to working in reverse. Darkening down a bright surface rather than the other way around. I'm also after getting as many shades of black as possible. A contradictory statement, I know, but the Zenithal Prime will help with that. The next step is to use a contrast paint called Black Templar, diluted with contrast medium, two parts black to one part medium. Something that we need to decide when painting black is how will the miniature be viewed? Is it going to be from a meter's distance on a tabletop, decimating its foes? Or rather in a nice photograph on Reddit or Instagram? A tabletop miniature is going to need less black to not look flat. Not diluting the contrast paint and the result is too dark for my tabletop. Diluting the paint also allows me to slop on quite a hefty amount getting a smooth result whilst not having to worry too much about the puddles. The beauty with this recipe is that it's variable. You can experiment with different quantities and find a shade that suits your needs. A tip is to mix a larger batch of contrast. Um, measurements on larger quantities are easier to get right and therefore also to repeat. If you mix too much, you can always save it in a spare bottle for future use. Now, remember how I said that this method is quite specific? Well, this is where the specifics start. I'm going to use a black soot liquid pigment from Green Stuff World. The specific reason for this is because it will leave me with a slight texture that works really well to give depth to the black surface. The other reason is that this liquid pigment is a neutral shade of black. The Black Templar is kind of blue. And I want to get rid of that. I'm going to use this black to shade down the armor even more. But first, I start with some water that contains a few drops of dishwasher detergent. Not the stuff for machine wash. It's really 
dangerous. The normal green lemony perfumed uh, stuff that you use when you wash your dishes by hand. Adding this to the paint, the water with the drop of um, uh, detergent in it, will dilute the paint, but also removes surface tension. That way I can paint it on, and the paint will, because of the lack of surface tension, naturally flow and stick to crevices and ridges. I can then whisk the brush off in some water, go back with a little bit of water, only water, in the brush, and paint on the places I don't want any paint. It's like I'm painting with an eraser. The result will, in the best of situations, be a gradient going from plain water, i.e. no paint, to the paint with the pigment in it, resulting in a sort of smooth transition between the two. I repeat this step in just a few places where I felt that the black really should be, you know, just black. And this entire process could be done with a black ink instead, but I do really like the slightly grainy surface that this liquid pigment creates. Finally, it's time to define some highlights. And this is the trickiest part. Highlighting black is the perfect opportunity to turn your black into a grey. Um, which you shouldn't. Because as we know, black is black. The highlights we're adding are in fact light reflections, I guess. If we're going for a shiny surface, like uh, Darth, uh, we can go pretty heavy on the, the edge highlights. But if we're going for like a matte cloth, we have to be pretty careful with these. Now, I'm using another liquid pigment for this, white dust. And I would have to say that this is very specific. I can't recommend anything else here. White dust is, for me, the best white paint I've found for dry brushing. It's thin, and thus, it's never really white on the first layer. Whatever's underneath will shine through, which is perfect for this application. If I would want really white highlights, I would probably have to add three or four layers of this stuff uh, with a dry brush. Also, this paint doesn't really build up in rough layers. You know, when dry brushing with a regular paint, it's quite common to get an unpleasant sort of rough texture. The first strokes dry fast and the next strokes dry on top of the first ones and, and so on, resulting in a bumpy surface on all the edges. That does not really happen with the liquid pigment. The only thing to look out for, because it's thin, is to make sure to wipe the brush off very, very thoroughly. I'm using a large uh, makeup brush, great for dry brushing, trying to start the brush stroke uh, up and brushing down so that the highlights are rightly placed in regards to the light from the imaginary sky that this little mini has above it. I gave the mini two rounds of this dry brushing, leaving sort of medium grey highlights. But it's not actually highlights. The, the highlights are not much brighter than before the dry brush. I'm only trying to define them. Bringing forth all the details in the armour that might have been hidden by previous layers of paint. I did exaggerate the weaponry though, giving it a whiter edge, thus making it look sharp and shiny. Uh, remember the, the Darth Vader thingy. I've talked a lot, but this process is efficient, and you can get through quite a lot of black armor in quite a short period of time, if you wish. To give some context to the armor, I painted up a few of these knights, giving them some characteristically uh, fitting, glowing, fanatical eyes, because um, these Stormcast folk, they're actually... It's kind of funny that they're considered to be the good guys. But anyway, uh, with some blue skirts and this kind of stuff. And I really liked how these knights turned out. They're a bit bright under this light, but under a normally lit tabletop, they definitely look like they're wearing black armor. Most importantly, they're wearing black armor that I can see and are not just blobs of black. There are a few more things we can experiment with, but we're now stepping out of the time efficient box entering the um, this could take all the time in the world box. I wanted to emphasize the shiny Darth Vader effect for you, um, adding a shiny surface effect on the shields by edge highlighting with a pure white. The shield on the left now looks like it's more a shiny metallic black than just a dull painted black. 
uh, like the other one on the right. But it still feels like shiny black though and not grey. So adding white highlights is in the right places fine if you're after a shiny looking surface. It's also possible to add slight hints of other tones to black to make it a little bit more exciting to the eye. This could represent reflected colours from the ground or other surrounding terrain. Diluting a paint heavily with water, and I mean heavily, and then adding it in layers is a fun but time-consuming way of adding a bit of excitement to a black surface. Adding scratches or chipping is another way of uh, livening up an otherwise flat black surface. In a way, painting something fun on a surface will draw the eye towards that and away from the dull black. So how would I go about painting black without the contrast paint and, and all of that? Well, uh, probably different ways depending on the subject at hand. A tank, a cloak, armor, an axe, skin, they're all different in size and texture. And the black would look different on all of them because of that. I don't really have a trick in the toolbox for black, apart from what I just said. Thinking of black more along the lines of what type of surface or texture it is, and not that it's a color. Shiny black armor will look very different from a matte black cloak. The only little trick I do appreciate is working backwards. Like I did on the nights, where I started with a grey surface uh, and worked towards black, but that concept can be done in different ways. I painted some black hair recently, and really scary, uh, more lunatic glowing eyes, uh, but this is a magician, so it's like the magic coming out of the eyes. Anyway, I started with a covering layer of black, and then gradually highlighted with lighter and lighter shades of grey. By the way, you can mix your own grey with different colour tones uh, by using paint that contains a lot of white, but also something else mixed in with the black. That was confusing. But say you use a pastel blue um, mixed with black will give you a cold toned grey. Or if you use a warm skin tone mixed with the black, you get a warmer grey. This effect can be discreet, but sometimes useful and effectful. I used a warm grey on the top of the head and a cold grey on the sides. Now I worked these highlights up to the dreaded point when the hair looked like it was grey hair and not black. But now there was at least a sense of gradients going. So then I watered down a black heavily and tone everything back down again. I don't know, I just find it easier to work up highlights like this and then tone them down rather than painting with hardly visible layers of very, very dark grey. And the black can be added in different amounts, in different places, shaping the light. I've now run out of things to say about painting black. Um, I hope the black armour recipe can, can be useful to you and the general thoughts on painting black. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, share with your friends or just shout it out real loud. Uh, you can, and I would be very happy if you did support my continued work on making these videos uh, by joining the 52 Miniatures Patreon. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.